Welcome into the world of HTML. 3. Boot up your computer. Windows sign in dialog. 2. Grab some comfort food. 1. And let's go. Hey guys, what is up? It's your girl Lee Queen here and I'm back with the second video in the HTML series. A lot of you guys enjoyed the last video and I'm back with another quick video for the series. I'm extremely busy right now but I didn't want to just leave you guys hanging so I said I had to push this one out. In this video we'll be finishing our setup to get you guys ready to actually start coding your website and I'll also be teaching you about attributes. But before we get into this video, remember please like the video if you love the content, subscribe if you're new and turn on that notification bell to be alerted whenever I'll post the next video in the series. Also note that the transcript for this video will be on my website so you can look out for that link down below in the description and the instrumentals for this video have been provided by Inner Sanctum Entertainment LTD. But without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so last time I gave you guys a basic introduction to HTML. So now you know what it is, how it works and how you can use it. Now I'm going to take you through some basic steps that you will follow when creating your website. And then later on I will introduce you to attributes, what they are and how you can use them. So when creating a website, the first thing you should do is to start out by creating a folder to put in all the files that will be relating to your website. These may include the HTML files, images, CSS files, and etc. This folder will be important, especially when it's time to deploy your website. So find a location of your choice and create your folder there. I'm going to create mine on my desktop, so let me go there. So my Windows plus my D. Folder view list. My logo is 9 of Then let me use my Ctrl plus my Shift plus my N to create a new folder. Edit selected new folder. Now let me call it web series. Caps cap caps lock off E B space caps cap caps lock E R I E S. Then I'll press enter to save. Web series 30 of 30. Now let's open it. Web series window. Tree view. Quick access expanded one of two level zero. Now we're going to move the HTML file that we created in the last video into this folder. So let me go to its location, cut it and paste it in this folder and I'll get right back to you. Web series window, items view list, testweb.html one of one. The next thing that I'm actually going to do is to rename the file. When we deploy our code, we'll be uploading the folder that we created for our website, which is also called a directory. When we do this, especially when you have multiple HTML files in your folder, which is when you have multiple pages for that website, the server will need to know which one of the HTML files to use as your home page. That is the default page that is displayed once somebody visits your website domain. This can be configured in your server settings depending on which server you use to deploy your website. However, there's a name that we can give the file in which most web servers will automatically detect the file and use it as your home page. This name is index.html and it is written in all lowercase letters. So this file that we were working on from last video that I'm currently selected on now in my new web series folder is the file that I want to be my home page. So I'm going to rename it from testweb.html to index.html. So I'll press my F2 to rename. Testweb.html edit selected testweb. Then I'm going to put index. I N D E X. Then press enter. Index.html one of one. Awesome. Also, now while we're on the topic of file names, here are some best practice tips for naming your HTML files. Number one, don't use any special characters. Stick to letters, numbers, underscores, periods, and hyphens. Number two, do not use any spaces. Number three, it is best to stick to lowercase letters. Number four, start the name of your file with a letter. All right, now let's get back to editing that file that we created from the last video, which is now index.html. To do that, once selected on it, press your applications key or your shift plus F10. Context menu. Then down arrow to open with and press enter. 
or you can just press H. Google Chrome G. Then you down arrow to Notepad and press Enter. Internet Microsoft Notepad N. Web index.html notepad. Text editor edit multi line less doc type HTML greater than. Awesome, now we are back into this document. Now let me read from the top of the document to remind you what we had in it from the last video. Note that I have my reporting of line indentation turned on. Less doc type HTML greater than. Less HTML greater than. Less head greater than. Two space less title greater than TQ test website less slash title greater than. No indent less slash head greater than. Less body greater than. Two space less H1 greater than welcome to my website less slash H1 greater than. Less P greater than this is a test dot less slash P greater than. No indent less slash body greater than. Less slash HTML greater than. So as you can see, other than the tag that should be at the extreme top of your document, which is the doc type tag, all the other code must be enclosed between an opening and closing HTML tag. Now there's one additional thing that I need to mention about the HTML tag. Remember last video that I told you that your tags can have something called attributes? Well, these attributes allow us to provide additional information about the tag so that we can customize them to suit our needs. An attribute is always found in the opening tag of a HTML element. And the syntax for an attribute is Name equals right quote value right quote Let me go through it by character N A M E equals right quote V A L U E right quote Awesome! Now this is how it would look within an opening HTML tag. Less tag name name equals right quote value right quote greater than Let me go through that by character Less T A G cap n a m e space n a m e equals right quote v a l u e right quote greater than awesome attributes can be written in any order inside the opening tag however you cannot put multiple instances of the same attribute inside the same html tag throughout this tutorial we will go through various tags and the attributes that they have the first attribute that I'm going to introduce to you is the lang attribute. That is L-A-N-G and it stands for language. The HTML lang attribute is used to identify the language of text content on the web. This information helps search engines return language specific results. And it's also used by screen readers that switch language profiles to provide the correct accent and pronunciation. Without a language attribute, screen readers would default to the operating system's language which could result in mispronunciation of the content. The lang attribute takes an ISO language code as its value. Typically, this is a two-letter code such as EN for English, but it can also be an extended code such as EN-GB for British English. I will provide a link below to a website that is a reference for all the ISO language codes. Now, to set the primary language for a document, you will use the lang attribute on an opening HTML tag. Since my website is going to be English, we're going to set the file's lang attribute value to en. So let me go to the line with my opening HTML tag. Less HTML greater than. Then let me press my end key to go to the end of the line. Carriage return. Then I'm going to use my left arrow to navigate right to the spot right in front of the greater than sign. Greater than. Then I'd press my space because a space must be in between the name of the tag and the attribute. Space. Then, let me type in the name of the attribute, which is lang. L A N G. Then, my equal sign. Equals. Then, my opening quote. Quote. Then, E N for English. E N. Then, my closing quote. Quote. So, your line should read. Less HTML lang equals quote and quote greater than. And let me read it by character as well. Less H T M L space L A N G equals quote E N quote greater than awesome the lang attribute must also be used to identify chunks of text that is different from the primary language of the document this means that it can also be used in tags such as the heading and paragraph tags this is often overlooked however because it doesn't really matter to someone who is viewing the website with their eyes but it does matter to us screen reader users as it helps our screen readers to be able to switch to that language profile if you have that option enabled. And of course, you would add the lang attribute to that element just as how we did it with the HTML tag. 
you must also note that for some tags an attribute is mandatory for it to be able to work for example an image tag the source attribute is mandatory to actually link it to the source of the image all right so that is it for this quick video guys i know it wasn't much but it's all i have time for right now you guys will be seeing a next upload for me soon so look out for that and don't forget remember to save your index.html file remember that a link to the transcript for the video will be down below in the description and also a link to the website where you can find the reference for the iso language codes will be down below as well thanks again for watching remember to like subscribe comment and share and i'll see you guys next time